Welcome to the topic on preparations to start a new drawing. In this tutorial, you will learn methods to input a command from the ribbon by giving keyboard input, undo redo commands and units command. We will start with the commonly used methods to input a command in AutoCAD. You are already familiar with the concept of a command. If I want to give line command, I can do that by clicking on the line icon at the draw panel. When I click there, it will ask me for the first point. When I drag my mouse, you can see the length of that line as well as the inclination of that line with the x-axis. I can click to define the next point and click once more to define the next point. Likewise, I can draw this line. Suppose if I want to cancel this ongoing command, I can do that by pressing the escape key. Next, I would like to construct a circle. For that, I am not going to choose the circle command from the ribbon, but instead, I will type the first letter of the circle command, that is C. In AutoCAD, each command has abbreviations, which you can memorize and input those abbreviations at the command prompt. I will type C and AutoCAD will list all the commands that starts with the letter C. I can give an enter to give circle command, or I can pick on any command that starts with the letter C from the given list. I will give an enter. Then it will ask me for the center point, which is the default prompt. So I will give a value. I will type 500. You can see that appearing at the cursor location. Now you can press tab key, then again type 500. Give an enter. Now you can see the center point appearing at that particular coordinate location. Next I have to specify the radius. Instead of specifying the radius, if I want to give the diameter, I can click on the diameter option and I will give a value of 600 units and I'll give an enter. In AutoCAD by default, each and every input you give appear at the cursor location. That is because the dynamic input is on. If it is not visible at the status bar toggles, you can activate it at the customization area. Once this is disabled, then the commands and the user inputs given will appear at the command line. By pressing the up arrow key, you can go backwards and see all the previously given commands. By pressing the down arrow key, you can move forward. By pressing the F2 function key, you can see all the previously given commands and prompts in a window called history window. You can scroll your mouse to see the history. You can right click, copy this history and save it to a text file for future reference. And by pressing F2 again, you can close the history window. AutoCAD memorizes the most recently given command which can be repeated by giving an enter or by right clicking the mouse. I'll just right click the mouse to get the context sensitive menu and here the first option is repeat arc. Since arc being the most recently given command, by clicking on the repeat arc option, I can repeat the arc command. Now I will press escape to cancel this command. By hitting on the enter key, I can repeat the most recently given command. Keyboard has two enter keys. But in AutoCAD, enter can also be given by pressing the spacebar. And that is a preferred method because spacebar is a larger key when you compare with other enter keys of the keyboard. In AutoCAD, you can always undo a command and undo will reverse the effect of the most recently given command. For example, I'll draw a circle using center radius method and I'll right click and repeat the circle command once more. Again right click, repeat circle and I'll draw one more circle. Undo can be given either by giving U using the keyboard or you can choose undo command from the quick access toolbar. So I'll give undo, that circle is gone. One more undo, the previous circle is gone. With the third undo, you can remove the circle which you have drawn first. Now I'm going to give redo. Redo will always undo the undo. Redo, redo, redo. Now I've got the circles back, but the redo should be given immediately after the undo. Otherwise it won't work. Next we will see units command. Before we start any drawing, we have to set a proper unit. Basically, we create drawings in decimal and imperial units. In AutoCAD, when you work, we create drawings in true dimensions. Later on, when you plot the drawing, you can either scale up or scale down the drawing to fit to a particular paper size. You can type UN for units command and you will see the drawing units dialog box appearing. Or else, you can see the application button, drawing utilities. Here, you can see the units command. We should set the units for the linear as well as for the angular measurements. For the linear measurements, we have architectural, decimal, engineering, fractional and scientific. In architectural units, you can draw in feet and inches. It's represented like a fraction. 
Feets are represented in single quotation and inches in double quotation. And if you do not specify any symbol along with the number you enter, your values will be treated as inches. In decimal, the values you enter will be represented in decimal format. In engineering, only inches are used and fractional is used by cabinet makers. Here, the values are represented in inches but in a fractional format as you can see in the sample output. In scientific, the values are represented in 10 to the power of E format. That means in the exponential form. Let's choose decimal because it's meant for metric and is commonly used in India. Next, I have to specify the number of decimal places. We can have a maximum of 8 decimal places. I'll set it at 2. Here, we have an insertion scale option. In AutoCAD, we can insert an external drawing into the current drawing. If it is drawn in different units, AutoCAD scales that external drawing in such a way that its unit matches the units of the current drawing. Next, we have to set the lighting units. We have three options here. I'll set it at international. And we have the system of angular measurements. We have decimal degrees, degrees minute seconds, gradients, radians, etc. And the commonly used one is decimal degrees. And I'll choose that. Here also we can specify the decimal precision. By default, the angles are measured in the counterclockwise direction. If you want, you can just click here to reverse this direction. Now I'll click on the direction button to set the start angle position. By default, this base angle is set at east, which is the positive x-axis direction. If you select north, your zero angle will be set at y-axis direction or north direction. You can choose any desired direction. I'll choose east, which is the default. Now I'll click on OK to go out of the drawing units dialog box. In this tutorial, we have learned methods to input a command from the ribbon and by giving keyboard input, undo redo commands and units command. In the next video, we will see the concept of limits.